Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we are continuing in verse 5 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we continue this series of teachings on false teachers, we continue in verse 5, and it says, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. And we saw that last lesson, that uh, perverse disputings uh, meant that they are people, these false teachers, rub people the wrong way, continuously causing friction. And they are men of corrupt minds, which means they have a rotten mind. Their mind has been infected with pride. Pride, they have allowed pride to come in and they, it infected their mind and now their mind is completely rotten. All right? Now, uh, then it says here, and where we get in this lesson, and it says, and destitute, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Now, so here are these, here are these false teachers who are proud, they know nothing, their minds are blinded, and they cause, they have, that they have a morbid desire for for questions and strifes and they have envy and strife and railings evil surmisings perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds their their mind now is completely and totally corrupted and rotten and then to finish it off it says paul says and they are destitute of the truth and this is the sad part about these false teachers, destitute of the truth. And this Greek word for destitute is apostereo, and it's perfect passive. If you've noticed the last few lessons, all of these Greek words are perfect passive. And it, it apo, apostero means to rob or to defraud someone, to rob somebody or to defraud them. And in the perfect tense, it means that the work of the robbing has of the truth is over. It's completed. They've been, they're destitute of the truth. They've been robbed of the truth. These false teachers, somebody came in and robbed them of the truth. What, what was it? It was pride. Pride came in and robbed them of the truth. Passive voice means they received the action of being robbed. So the work of robbing the truth out of their hearts is over. It's over. And they received the action of that ro of being robbed. Now, it's believed that these false teachers at one time had the truth and then they were robbed of it because they received false teachings. The false teachings they heard initiated an action upon their minds and then they passively received the false teachings as truth and as gain. Then the true teachings were driven out, robbed them from, from their minds, resulting in them having a decaying and a rotting mind. So, these people, these false teachers, this phrase, destitute of the truth, is a very sad thing because it has an implication that it's talking about teachers who did at one time teach the truth. They did teach people the word of God in truth. And they did lead people to a knowledge of God in purity. But somewhere, somehow, they got a hold of some bad teaching. Maybe from another preacher. Maybe from another teacher who got infected by 
there by false teachings and now their mind is rotten and now they're they're sharing their rottenness with with this person this true teacher and he's listening to it and he's receiving it and he receives it into his mind and then a pride begins and the infection of that false teaching begins to take place and years later their mind is rotten the truth has been completely stolen out of their mind and 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 this is what this is sad because it's talking about people who used to teach the truth but now they don't anymore because they received false teaching maybe maybe they started maybe they didn't hear it from some person maybe they read it in a philosophy book or some some kind of uh science book or whatever and 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 they they received some knowledge from somewhere and it infected it infected what they knew about the truth and they received it and they believed it and now it it began to push the truth out and now inside their heart the truth does not reign maybe you can think of somebody who you know who are who are destitute of the truth they've been robbed from of the word of god they were hungry for god years ago but now because because of false teaching maybe because of sin maybe because of pressures of life or trials in life god's truth has been driven out of their minds because they received the action of these things it doesn't necessarily have to be only false teachings it could be sin. maybe maybe that a sin in their life and they just can't seem to get victory and they give up they give up and they stray from god well if god's not going to deliver me from this sin i'm going away right i don't want anything more to do with him i've prayed for years and he won't deliver me from this right or some kind of trials and pressures why is god allowing me to have all these bills and all these things and, and things in life can also cause a person's heart to stray from god and it can begin to push out the word of god from their minds this word destitute also can refer to someone who has been robbed of ever knowing the truth maybe they never knew the truth in their life they know of they know about salvation and they are accountable for it but the weeds and the tares in their heart prevent them from making a commitment to god's truth so again destitute of the truth can be talking about someone who did know the truth and did teach the truth but something happened and they received false teachings they received something from the atmosphere and it pushed out the truth of god or they just never knew the truth and the weeds and the tares in their hearts from the old sin nature kept them from from receiving the truth of god oh they knew about salvation they heard about jesus but they never really gave their heart to christ ever maybe you know somebody like that who you witness to and they heard the word they heard you you witness to them and they came close to receiving christ but they never did it they came close to giving their hearts to god but they did not make that commitment they never made the commitment and and this is what this is what destitute of the truth means it means they're there it means that they've been robbed of the truth and then it says here supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw yourself supposing that gain is godliness it should actually say this phrase that godliness is a way of gain these false teachers have made religion a way to make to make a living and to profit by it and there are some religious leaders whose sole purpose is to make money 
by means of religion. You may not think so, but yes, there are people, you know, there are plumbers and there are electricians and there are, are truck drivers and, you know, doctors and lawyers and stuff, but there are people who make religion their profession. And they make it their career. And as Paul said, as Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18, the labor, the labor is worthy of his hire. But the motive of all that he does should be that of being a servant, not of personal gain. His main desire should be of giving and spending his life for the sheep, not of gain or fleecing the sheep. So this is where we need to be discerning. Is this preacher or teacher or reverend or whatever, are they doing this for gain? Is this their profession? Or is it their life? Are they giving, are they giving their life for the sheep? Or do they expect the sheep to give to them? I remember years ago, uh, many years ago, back in the 1970s, pastor said to me, well, he didn't say it directly to me, but I heard, I heard him say it. My grandfather was a, was a, a certain kind, of, I won't say the denomination. My grandfather was a, was a pastor of this denomination. My father was a pastor of this denomination. I'm a pastor of this denomination, and my son will be a pastor of this denomination. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And and that's how that's how it is sometimes. And you know, it's like now I found out years later that uh, his son, as far as I knew, uh, he did not become a pastor in that uh, denomination, but. Anyways, uh, and you get some, some people are, are like that. They're, this is their profession and this is their, this is their job. You know, religion is their job and that's how they make their money, right? And it's not that they, you know, that they don't like God or anything. There's, you know, there is a desire for God and, but, and there is a desire for the things of God. But the thing is, is, uh, have they really given their heart to Christ? Be careful with TV and radio preachers and pastors and, and teachers who spend a lot of time asking for money. Be discerning. It's not wrong to ask for money, but when you got a 15 minute program and 10 minutes of it is asking for money and you got three minutes of, of the word of God and you've got two minutes of, of, of introduction, well, what is that, right? And, and beware of people, who, uh, of people who are always, you know, uh, trying to figure out a way to get money out of you and, and fleecing the sheep. Again, yes, these, these ministries need to be supported, but, but, you know, God's will for that ministry, maybe, you know, Maybe their time time for that ministry is over. I don't know. If you're going to support a ministry, make sure they preach the word of God, the truth of the word. Does the leader have a heart after God? And does he have a servant's heart? And, and you have to just be discerning who you want to support on uh, TV shows or radio programs or whatever. You have to be discerning. Who you're going to support? Do they honor the word of God? Is that ministry promoting the truth of the word of God? Or is it just some religious good feeling thing out there? You know, doing good in the world. But, you know, there are a lot of programs. There's a lot of unsaved programs out there that are doing good for the world. So what's different about your ministry as opposed to this unsaved ministry that's doing the same thing? And, and if you see no difference, then why support that, right? And, and you just need to, need to be discerning who's teaching the word of God. Is, is God's word, is God's truth going out to the world? Are you pr promoting the word of God, the heart of God to people's life? 
And then it says, from such withdraw thyself. And this phrase, this phrase is actually not in uh, many of the uh, manuscripts and it is omitted by most commentators. So generally the, the verse stops at uh, supposing that gain is godliness, all right? So just be discerning, pray, trust God, and support who, who you enjoy hearing the word of God from, as long as they're teaching truth from the word of God. All right? Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.